person. Um, but we have a quorum and the work continues. So the first item on our agenda tonight is an ARPA update, legislation to define ARPA program, its requirements, disbursements, and required documentation. So I don't know if uh, Chief Heim, if you are Jamar, are taking, it looks like Jamar. Good evening, Council. Um, Councilman Dalbert, I came in at the tail end of your comment. It it looks on our agenda is legislation to define the ARPA program, its requirements, disbursements, and required documentation. Maybe it would be better for us to go through um, as Council and and um, discuss those uh, the solicitor's recommendations. That probably would be the best. Much more effective use of our time. Yes. So okay. So um, we have the uh, solicitors, our solicitors' recommendations for this um, in terms of a an allocation to small businesses. Um, looking at that list, does anyone have comments, concerns, objections to any of the eligibility criteria? that is um, listed. Um, I know that this was this was attached to the to the agenda. So yeah, I was able to read it. And no, I don't have any issues with it. I appreciate Mike sending that over. Thank you. Sure. And just to clarify, I mean I would coin these more as recommendations for consideration. Yes. Um, you know, I did not admittedly come up with this on my own. I did some research. There's other cities out there that had similar grant programs and, um, you know, just looked at some of the requirements, conditions that they had and, you know, just put some together that I thought would be helpful for city council and administration to um, put, put something down to paper and get the conversation started. Um, so really good stuff, Mike. Uh, thank you. Thanks a, a bunch for that. Um, most of uh, the criteria for eligibility, the administration doesn't necessarily oppose, but we would like to maybe um, massage some of the language. For example, under criteria number six, uh, the business is not facing any pending litigation or legal action. Well, the city of Reading fits in that box. We're we have um, both serious and frivolous cases all the time. So we might wanna qualify that with an asterisk um, subject to some sort of further review that doesn't just cut off any organization that's facing any pending litigation. Cause again, the city itself would fall into that category. I can agree with that. Um, yeah, and I think that's designed one to weed out the bad actors, but also to make sure that they're not using the money to pay off any lawsuits or settlements. Oh, definitely. Totally agree there. Um, then on the eligible uses paragraph, we would want to strike the last line of that paragraph. Um, funding for financial hardship will only be made available up to a percentage of the business's previous fiscal year's revenue to be determined. Um, similar to our approach with the nonprofit grant program, our preference is not just because Chris Dalbert's uh, small business lost revenue during the height of the pandemic that we're inclined to reimburse you just because you lost $10,000 in revenue. We don't necessarily support that approach. But to the extent that you are um, replacing your HVAC system, um, 
that you may, or you didn't have an HVAC system. And as a result of the pandemic, you would like to install something like that. We would consider that sort of uh, improvement to your business. Um, if you're a restaurant on Penn Street and you want uh, to create a sidewalk cafe, we want to incentivize those sorts of additions um, to small businesses in our downtown area. Yeah, um, thank you, Mr. Kelly, for that, because I absolutely support that. Um, I think that that needs to be included in this, uh, that just lost revenue. We're also, I mean, it's also now 2023. Um, that that becomes, a, and, and that also becomes a very slippery slope, I think, because is, are, we, are we potentially paying, paying for businesses that have failed and are no longer viable. You know what I mean? Like that, we have to be wise with how we spend this. We, that, that, I would not support that obviously um, because it has to be, all of this ARPA money has to be an investment with a return for the city, um, not for a private individual. So I would certainly support striking that last line um, I very much also appreciate what you said about like for certain projects. That's in my mind how I see this going. I see it as, oh, you know, our HVAC system, our, um, we want to improve our facade. I know we already have facade improvement programs, but we want to do X, Y, or Z. That, those are, in my mind, very legitimate uses. Lost revenue is, is not in my mind. So that's that's where I stand on that. I don't know where my colleagues do. Um, in terms of formatting on the recommendations, and um, I know the mayor had some comments he wanted to provide on where he stands. Um, and I know it's <laughs> only recommendations, Mike, but if you look at the capital expenditures part, we would just put a space there because it seems like that's lumped in with ineligible uses. And I think we all agree that capital improvements are um, something we're in support of. Yeah, that I think it was just the formatting when it got copy and pasted in. The eligible uses were supposed to be financial hardship, business development, capital expenditures, those three categories. Awesome. Um, First of all, let me just uh, thank the council body and, and the solicitor specifically for the recommendations that were made and are being discussed this evening. Um, uh, I, I think they are uh, very fruitful. And as you're hearing already, you know, we support most of them. Uh, there's some that might be debatable, but, you know, we, we, I think that that's exactly what a government body does, you know, uh, collaborate and talk and, and, and uh, bring it to the table. Um, but overall, I think that they were really good recommendations. Um, I, I, so I want to thank you for that. I also want to take the opportunity real quickly to say that, you know, um, it, it, the fact that we're talking about the small business grant opportunities, which has been something very close and dear in a variety of minds. And we finally, after some months of discussion, we coming to some kind of fruition of the fruition of the, of the, of the dialogue is very uh, 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 appreciative of me. I have been talking to many businesses and, you know, it's pretty obvious that um, it's a need. It's a need for, for this kind of service. However, what I really wanted to get into is that you guys are making some good points, and I thought it was appropriate for me to chime in that I'm going to be also making some recommendations of a, a separation of the two million, of a million and a million for di two different uh, um, uh, opportunities. The first one is, as you guys are currently discussing with, the fact that lost revenue should not only be a consideration, but also if we've lost businesses in downtown as a consequence, this is an opportunity to revitalize the downtown area, Penn Street specifically. So we're gonna recommend, I'm gonna recommend that $1 million be served, um, is reserved to an enterprise the downtown small business improvement and development on Penn Street specifically. Um, with uh, 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 including a maximum allocation of up to $50,000 for businesses. Um, that way we could 
uh, bring more business attention to the downtown, whether assisting businesses or businesses that want to relocate to the downtown Penn Street area specifically. Um, and then the other recommendation of the additional $1 million is for four, uh, small businesses throughout the city uh, located outside of Penn Street that would allow the potential to service nearly 40 uh, potential projects at a $25,000 maximum. So if it's in the downtown Penn Street, $50,000 maximum and 25 and breaking it down to two different sections of a million each. And I thought it was important for me to say that at this point, especially that we're discussing the, the, the you know, the grant uh, uh, opportunities itself. Um, so, you know, you're hearing from, 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 from Mr. Uh, Kelly, you're going to hear the same support from um, the managing director and my administration that uh, we definitely support um, many of the dialogue that was brought up already and the ones that we will continue to discuss. But I also want you guys to take the opportunity at this point to uh, consider these recommendations I'm making. Can you repeat the first part of what the for the for downtown specifically? What is it going to be for? Can okay, so that, specifically one million dollars for Penn Street. So any businesses that, regardless, with you know, have had hard hardships due to the pandemic, they lost revenue. For example, um, you know, and I shouldn't be naming, but I am. The peanut bar. The peanut bar was a location they used to open up from noon to closing at late at night. That's no longer the case. You know, they have very limited hours. We had a location on 9th Street that closed completely and definitely. And that building is sitting there available. If somebody from outside of the Penn Street area that is, has a business, current business in the city of Reading and wants to relocate to that location, a $50,000 grant will probably go a long way just to revitalize the downtown area because we lost some businesses there since the pandemic. Does that answer your question? It does, but so who's, okay, you're saying bringing businesses downtown with that money, but who's going to get those businesses to bring them downtown, to locate down, relocate downtown? I lost your question. You're, you stated that it, it would be to bring, so there was a business that closed down. It's no longer there. So it's an empty building. How, who's getting if there's a business in the city, let's say there's a restaurant that is not in, in Penn Street, but it's in Spring Street, and they want to relocate to Penn Street, they could qualify for up to $50,000 to assist them. But who's going to get those businesses? Oh, they have to apply for themselves. We don't look for them. But what happens if we don't get enough people that actually want to come downtown to do that? Well, again, it's not just for that. It's for uh, up to a million dollars for current businesses so if you if you calculate let me break it down this way if you calculate fifty thousand dollars times 20 that's a million dollars and this already near 20 businesses downtown they could potentially qualify but this is an addition to so it's not like the money is not going to get utilized is that what you're asking yeah yeah any other question um i, I certainly can appreciate the I like the idea of getting the most bang for our buck in terms of uh, of as many as we can out of each million. Um, and I also, um, you know, so so potentially that's that's forty businesses outside of Penn Street for the twenty five thousand max. Um, what what's the what do you foresee as the criteria for? Um, for that to happen. I think I understand with the first part, because with the first part, it's if somebody wants to come downtown. Okay. What outside of that, like 25,000 outside the city, what, what, are, what do you see? Because that's, this is what I think this, how this is most productive. If we all talk about what we see is the, how we see this working. So what, what do you see as the criteria for that 25 up to 25,000. So, <clears throat> um, Councilor Daubert, we created a application, okay, for the businesses. We, on that application, we have all of the commercial corridors in the city outlined. 
So for example, um, to Melissa's question and what the mayor was trying to explain, if you were relocating to Penn Street, you would have to submit a business plan that explains how that's gonna happen, um, the cost for the improvements, site acquisition, all of those details would be reviewed um, before an application of that type would be approved. Um, for businesses outside of that uh, Penn Street corridor, if you will, the cap is $25,000. Um, similarly, you would have to explain either in your business plan or your uh, proposal for renovation of how that money is going to be broken down and spent. Mm -hmm. um, in Pennsylvania, and, and it'll get prickly as we deal with the uh, Penn Street businesses, and I don't want to go too far into detail because you're going to ask me questions I can't explain, but we have a prevailing wage issue. So if you're spending above 25000 on construction, that activates prevailing wage. So for the majority, 40 um, of the businesses, that won't be an issue. Um, it will potentially be an issue for those who are incentivizing on Penn Street with a potential allocation up to 50000 I hope that answers. That's very good. Um, are there any other questions from my council colleagues here? Like what, what do you, okay, uh, Councilman Butler. Yeah, so my question is, um, as it is right now, downtown with the parking, um, there seems to be not enough parking. And I guess it's safe to say that Penn Street is not booming as it should. And we don't have enough parking there. With adding more businesses, I guess for a business owner, how do we answer that for them as to more parking? So there are those of us that would push back um, and point out the significant number of parking garages in the downtown core um, that suggests that there is parking. We just need to reroute people with better wayfinding to find where those parking garages are currently located. We do also need to look at uh, potentially reconfiguring the layout of Penn Street to create more uh, on-street parking opportunities. Um, we have some really wide uh, boulevard sidewalks, if you will, that could be reconfigured. Um, we're not there yet, um, but I would say within three to five years, uh, the administration will have a plan for reconfiguring parking on Penn Street. And that'll, that builds on both the downtown plus and parking studies that were completed. All right. I, I would just add to that. I, that's the, what you just said, I think is the whole key, how we have to give people a reason to want to use the garages. There has to be something for them to, to want to go to. So uh, Councilman Miller. Just a couple questions, just for clarity for me. Um, when we talk about Penn street, we are talking about all of Penn street. Yes. From Front Street to the Mount, or Second Street to the Mount, to the park. Yeah, got it. <clears throat> the second thing is, um, I just need some clarification on this. Are you talking about businesses or people who are looking to invest in downtown as far as real estate? Not speculative investment. Okay, that's we're, why we're, I asked. Yeah, we're talking. We're we're targeting businesses currently owned and operated here in the city. Okay. And part of um, the uh, recommendations for criteria covers that. And so then, licensed to do business in the Commonwealth and in the city of Reading, um, physically located in the city of Reading, um, number of employees, uh, we believe the criteria you've recommended is gonna help with that. And is there something in place that allows that there isn't like a duplication of the same business multiple times. Like, is there some sort of formula that says there'll only be so many stores, so many restaurants, so many, so we don't end up with like a block of bodegas that are all competing with each other? Um, if you have some suggestions, we, we I don't. Are, I'm just asking okay. because these uh, these thoughts come into my mind, and I so just, uh, if I may, I, you know, it's, it's a very good question. However, as I think of the downtown, but there's so there's but so many 
spaces available. Like I could think of the, I, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, please forgive me, the Chinese restaurant on 9th Street that has been abandoned somewhat, right next to Family Dollar. Oh. I'm thinking of that place, right? right. How can we right. have a current business, current business that will qualify, that would like to maybe perhaps bring his business into the downtown area? And I think $50,000 would be a great incentive for somebody to come there. Um, I don't think that there's enough spaces to create more bodegas. You know what I mean? Like we want to assist the ones that are currently there. Let, but let me clarify. I'm sorry. So the the example that you gave you gave Mayor of a restaurant that left. Obviously, another restaurant could go in. Correct. But for a lot of the spaces, they're basically just raw space. So is the money there to entice people to be able to do the infrastructure to do what they need to do? Or is it just to get the business to move into the raw space and the business that would be the easiest would be like a store? That's what I'm trying to say. Like, what is the equation? But in some cases that could be a store. In other cases, it could be a restaurant. Think, for example, the recently rehabbed property at the corner of 8th and Washington. There's no one been, no one's quite moved into that space yet. My understanding is the kitchen isn't quite commercialized. Mm -hmm. 50,000 would go a long way to help commercialize that kitchen so that a viable, hopefully, restaurant would be able to move in and provide an anchor at that corner. Um, similarly situated for the corner of 9th and Penn Street, we believe 50,000 will go a lot way to help retrofit the kitchen in that facility and make it much more attractive uh, for a small, either restaurant or um, a more um, grab and go sort of operation to take hold there. Yeah. I don't, I don't mean to make this sound like a negative because I do think it's a positive. It's just that I know I'm going to be asked these questions yeah. when I go downtown. So I'm just trying to get a sense of, what the answers are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and, and they're very good answers, very good concerns. I, I, I think that, um, I, I think the process itself is gonna limit how many bodegas, uh, cause it's not like you can, this is not startup money. This is not startup money. You have to have had a business that had been in existence since at least 2020. This is not for startup funding. This, remember, this is still art for funding. It's just that we have, you know, we have an opportunity to, to, you know, tweak it a little bit, not just to be lost revenue uh, incentives. It's, it's, it's a little bit more. Um, another example I'll give on, I think it's on 11th or no, 12 and in and, and Pentry at the very end. There's a restaurant there, but I think they only open from three to nine or something like that. So, you know, again, these are opportunities. I mentioned the peanut bar, you know, I don't know exactly the reason why they're not opening up like the way they did at one point. But again, it could be, I think $50,000 will go a long way to get them back on, on track. Um, how, does, how does council feel about uh, the last line in the recommendations, consider reimbursement for eligible costs instead of lump sum grant. Um, my personal feeling on that is I, I definitely support that. On In some ways, I see it as in the, there may be cases where that just isn't viable. Like if it is replacing a kitchen, then, but but that it would, the money would be released to the the contractor doing the kitchen as opposed to you know what i'm saying so it's going directly to whoever's doing the work is that how, how does council feel about that i i like that last line um but i i would uh there may be some cases where that isn't totally feasible where it's like someone's not maybe wouldn't be able to the whole point of the money is they they don't have the 50,000. However, if, if they're going to be redoing a kitchen, 
instead of, I just don't know on our end, do we have the staff to manage this? Hey. There we go. <laughs> but, but also, but, but I was, I would recommend yeah. that like that individual would come with that plan and we would be cutting the check to the contractor who was doing the work to remodel the kitchen instead of just here, here's fifty thousand dollars. You see what I'm saying? No, yeah, I definitely understand that because some people don't have it up front to pay. However, there isn't we don't got the staff for that. Do you need staff? You know. Um so what I didn't say in my preamble is, um, and, and respectfully in my notes, it's who's going to verify, who's going to do all this work because we don't have the staffing. And what I was actually going to ask is um, in the initial round of allocations, we had requested 300,000 for administrative expenses for the consultant. We've burned through about 120,000 of the 150 the council did authorize. Um, so we're going to need more we're gonna need that full amount um, in order to do the verification on this program. Now, make no mistake, um, my assistant in the finance department does a lot of the checking of expenses um, on all of the nonprofits that are coming in on a monthly basis. Um, and then we uh, compare our notes with the consultants to make sure um, our reconciliation matches um, but we're already doing that for one program. We just don't have the bandwidth to do that for another program. Does anyone have anything else? Go ahead, Councilman Butler. Would bodegas qualify? I just want to make sure because aren't they government funded? Don't they accept food stamps? Like they uh, potentially could outside of Penn Street. Um, we're, we're not necessarily putting our thumb on the scale one way or the other. Um, but remember, uh, part of this is to improve what's currently existing. Um, so let's say um, a, uh, there's a way to remove shutters, um, but still secure the front entrance of your bodega. Hey, we would love things like that, removing those ugly shutters from neighborhoods. Um, but just because you put in an application, um, there's no guarantee of funding. Um, I did want to show somewhat related to ARPA, but Linda, can you please send me another link? Because I can't get into this meeting with the link that was sent last week. Um, there's been a, a question of, well, how much funding do we have remaining under ARPA? What can we do? What can't we do? And um, there were some updates to the initial regulations that came out. And in the last few weeks, we've pressed um, ZA, our consulting firm, to, lack of a better term, go back to the drawing board and make sure that um, we've qualified as many categories as we can under what's directly eligible for funding and um, take a step back, if you will, from trying to qualify everything under revenue replacement. And we have that update. And I'll send this to Linda electronically to share. No, 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 not right now. I'm, uh, uh, when I leave here. Um, okay. So in the allocation spreadsheet that's been distributed a few times, um, we have uh, two new columns, H and I, directly eligible versus not directly eligible. And so when we update um, what we've currently committed to, 
we now have 38 million of those projects qualifying as being directly eligible for funding. And then we have 30 million in projects not um, directly eligible. And of course that combined is more than the 61 million that we were allocated. Um, so in the next quarterly uh, treasury report, I'll work with ZA to reclassify the expenses that are already in the treasury portal. Um, what this will do on the back end is free up um, lost revenue funding that we will have more flexibility on spending. It's um, a back office uh, accounting cleanup, but um, wanted to share that with the council body because the question has percolated a few times of how much funding do we actually have available to spend. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, Councilman, Councilwoman, and Chair. Um, for the the first number one on eligibility criteria, I I mean, is does anybody consider removing it because that would limit the businesses? Maybe you know, even I don't know how, what businesses were getting per pandemic money, but. You know, some still may need help. Like, I don't know, like I said, I don't know how much they were getting and what, you know, that range was. Great feedback. So this um, uh, uh, came up internally, I will say. Um, for example, if you remember, uh, the city um, found a million dollars through um, some unspent federal funding where we were able to do um, a re a loan forgiveness program um, during the initial shutdown. And uh, I think there was a max of $5,000 and we ran that program through Community First Fund. And so businesses that were able uh, to justify their expenditures and did not uh, have layoffs, um, their $5,000 loan was forgiven. As we consider, um, uh, as we, prioritize revitalizing our small businesses, both on Penn Street and outside of Penn Street, in my humble estimation, we shouldn't ding businesses that we forgave $5,000 to. Um, to the point that Councilor Ventura is trying to make, we may wanna qualify that first eligibility criteria with an asterisk that breaks down conditions or exceptions to that. Um, yeah, I, I could support I can only speak for myself, but I could support that. Um, however, beyond that, in terms of PPP and all of those other things, I think that that should render ineligibility. Hang in the minute. PPP loan um, payment protection program, uh, there was, um, I mean, the, the, the county gave out some funding to businesses. Um, oh, the PPP was from county? No, PPP was from the federal government. Okay selectively run by the treasury department. Um, but the county had received uh, an allotment of that initial money. Um, I think the city received maybe just under 100,000 if my memory serves, the fire department did, had put in an application. So I think to Councilor Daubert's point, if you receive one of those big allocations from the county, you shouldn't be getting in line for this funding if you're CPPP. We understand that, but at a, at least for the money that we gave, it was a paltry five thousand dollars. We yeah. don't want to disadvantage it. I could I could agree with that having that exemption for five thousand dollars. But I mean, some of the some institutions they I remember see, reading it in the newspaper. It was you know they received a hundred thousand dollars. Like oh yeah, that's different. Yeah. So how would we word that though? Okay. We can work with the uh, solicitors to massage the language on that. Do, does anyone else have any? And just so we're all clear, once we agree on the formatting for the criteria, I'm going to put that into the top of the electronic application link that I sent you all. Okay. So it, it all ties in together. So when, when are we going live? Well, I think we need to pass an ordinance, right? Yes. Yes. All right. So we, we need, and how I see this working is that we need to have legislation on the table. Yes. We need to get it because, uh, so we're, we stop just talking about it. Send that through. Yeah. And <laughs> with the caveat that 
there may be some amendments made to that ordinance, but we do need to have something from which to to, to move from. So yeah, and uh, make no mistake, this has actually been a very healthy exercise because now we're all on the same page about the criteria. So hopefully the goalpost doesn't move too far once we introduce that legislation. Yeah. All right. So I think I think that was actually really productive. So that's a win. Um, just to confirm what we just said, we need to. Um, who who does that? The administration writes up the. The resolution it can come from either um, administration or council. Okay. So likely I won't have it ready by Wednesday for this coming Monday, but for the second Monday, I think we can achieve that. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes. I'll uh and copy everybody. Yeah, under that. yeah. And we just we have to discuss it, make all any changes that what we have to be very careful when we get that email. That has to be done in the public, right? So we may have to have, I don't know. We haven't. I mean, yeah. rem remember we we spent, <laughs> we spent like five months um uh, hashing out the. Uh, nonprofit regulations, I think one month back and forth is more like it won't be too much. All right. Does anyone have anything else on that? Okay. Um, next up on the agenda is an update from the parking work group. I am not on this. I don't know who is. I am. And Chris was as well. Miller. Um, however, it was like a month ago. Did, I don't have any notes from it, but we are scheduled to have a meeting. Weren't you on that meeting? Yeah, you were. Oh, no, it was you, Chris. It, it was one of the Chris's. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. So, so we'll just, we, we can move on um, okay. from that. How about, Sorry. And and this has been on our agenda for so many times. An update on sidewalk repair replacement. Jamal is not available this evening. Um, so if you recall, the last thing we talked about was we did not get any bids from interested contractors. So he was going to reach out to the smaller contractors that we have a list of and solicit some bids for doing that kind of work. So I don't have an update for you whether we were successful or not yet. But but do we know if it has actually happened yet? It has that reach out or discussion happened? I do not. It's not been put back out to bid yet. There is one um one small more bit of staff work uh, that I would say I'd like to be done that I think will help make a more successful bid the second time around. Um, uh, at issue, if I were to be candid, is the square footage in front of the 40 or so properties that were approved through the program. We need to provide that for each property. And so that process wasn't necessarily attractive as it was presented um, in the initial bid. So we need to find someone or, or uh, reallocate someone's time for at least two days to go to all of those locations, measure the square footage so we can put that into the RFP and make it easier for the um, vendors um, on the second time we put it out for bid. Okay, that, that makes sense. Um, so that would mean we're not going to get the sidewalks replaced this construction year. What this was, I remember this is a topic of conversation when I was appointed last year. Uh, is this going to is this going to be finalized before the end of the year or 
Yes. And if we miss our window for construction, it would be ready. It would be first out in March of next year, if that were the issue. We're hoping it's not. Okay. Does anyone from council have any? And yes. two more to that point. So if this was any sort of paving, we would already say it's not possible this year. I would agree to the premise of your initial question. But be, only because it's not asphalt paving, I do still think there's hope we could get it off the ground this year. Okay, I guess we'll put it for a how in so in so that we're not just put um, having it as a topic and essentially having the same conversation time after time. Like when should when should we? End of August. Update. End of August. Okay. If we don't have bids back by, then it's not going to happen this year. Okay. So end of August. So bids. When should we expect bids to go out? The bid package. I don't. I would. I'd rather not answer that. Okay. Okay. Because I mean, that's speaking for another department. Yeah, I, I got, I got you. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any questions or thoughts? Okay, so we will revisit this at a later date. Um, as the end of August is several, it's three months away. How about in like a month and a half we check on the status? How about that? Okay. Okay, that's her. All right. Any other councilman? No? Okay. Um, next up is prioritization of capital projects. Spreadsheet attached. Who would like to take us through this? So back in uh, January, um, the managing director charged us to figure out how can we use the remainder of the ARPA funding to cover um, repair, deferred maintenance of uh, city assets and properties. That then um, became a hot topic with the council body. And so our uh, capital project manager combined, I think three different property lists. Mm -hmm. um, assessing you know the list of properties that we have as it relates to uh being insured with our cip needs and then with um another list of properties that we had we commingled them into what you have before you um and that has a total of about 27 million in projects uh needing funding we also um, prioritized uh, those levels of funding. So for CIP funded projects, we made them a low priority. For ARPA funded projects, those are either a medium or high priority, um, especially because of the time frame that we have to spend the money down. And then for projects of um, very pressing importance, be it a public safety issue um, or something along those lines, we flag those as an immediate need. Um, another update that wasn't in the initial spreadsheet that was sent to you, and I referenced this just a few minutes ago, that we charged the consultants to see what's eligible and what's not. So you'll see up on the screen, we have a new uh, category in column G of directly eligible for funding, and then H not directly eligible. Um, the over under on that is of the priority capital projects that we've identified, um, and I referenced at 27 million, 19.8 uh, million of them will qualify under the expanded categories um, that Treasury issued. 
Um, so that's to say we can get a majority of the projects um, completed that are immediate and high priority um, on this list through the end of uh, 2026, which is when um, we have to spend the funding by. Um, I think the question um, for a council body is, are there any areas of disagreement of what's been presented to you um, as identified as priorities by the administration? Council colleagues, your initial look through of this list, does anyone have any disagreements um, with? And I can walk you through from the top if that makes I don't, you feel better. I don't think that's necessary. Let me skim through it real quick. I don't know if it was said before, but I, I apologize, but. It was I, like two months ago. Oh, all right, well, I'm, my, I'm sorry. Okay. Jamar's version was sent around, and then the version attached to your agenda was sent around as well. Are we speaking about the immediate ones first? Wherever um, you're interested, Council. These are all capital projects? Um, capital and some deferred maintenance. Because what happened to um, the, the baby pool? This is Where's Dave? with ARPA funding though. This is as it relates to ARPA funding. The baby pool is something that we can achieve with CIP funding okay. um, in future years. One of um, I like to see. Um, it is on high, but I didn't know that it was the hillside pool was going to be removed and installing a slash pod. That's an option for consideration. We're not married to it yet, but the um, we have a safety issue with leaving that, that pool there as it is currently. Yeah. We need to fill it in and figure something out. I like that idea. Does but we mean? could do um, potentially like a, a nice splash park. We can create some parking on a kind of far right side as I picture it standing facing the pool. Um, yeah. We have a few options that we could do up there. I, th I think, you know, some of those specifics can be ironed out, but we, I think what we're seeing from this is that administration is is supporting three million dollars for whatever that may look like up there. So, like some of the the um, details can be flushed out as we go. And on every big project, we're going to seek matching funds. For example, I see Bear Park Stadium lighting. Um, we fully expect that to cost four hundred thousand, um, but we uh, have a potential um, funding source for half of that. So that would knock that down from four to 200,000. So this um, list will constantly be a moving target um, as we lock in matching funds for a lot of these big ticket items. As of right now for myself, I'm comfortable with the, with the list of priorities. Because I really, I think really that's what we're looking at right now, right? Just to keep us on track. It's just, do you agree with the priorities, not what necessarily happens there? Because we don't want to, you know, go deep down a rabbit hole on something that 
nobody cares about. All right, I'm good. Councilman Butler. The 300,000 for the kennels, that's not sitting right with me, but can you further explain? So we currently have a very less than adequate um, facility for our canines, um, primarily in the police uh, division. So um, this funding would pretty much replace the current um, kennel uh, operation that I believe is over the Heinz-Lego pool area, I think, maybe somewhere over in that section of the city. Um, it, it, it's low priority, but over a three to five year time span, it's definitely needed. Anyone else? Does anyone have anything else for the good of the, the order? We are looking at, we have follow-ups. I mean, I don't think either of those are going to be discussed in the Allenbach Cemetery, components of Downtown Plus. Um, no, not at this time. Okay. So, does anyone have anything else that needs to be said? The active transportation group, those of you on council that are a part of that, those meetings are going to be restarting in the next couple of weeks. Um, we are going after major federal funding for implementation of that we started with an active transportation plan. It's morphing into an implementation action plan, which is needed to get the federal funding. Um, so those meetings, if you're part of that working group, are going to restart very shortly. Um, and we're targeting uh, late July, early August to submit at least two applications for funding. Um, think bike lanes, traffic calming, that sort of thing in both the downtown and outlying areas. There's about seven corridors that are part of that plan. All right, excellent. If no one has anything else, I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. You got it. Yeah. All right, thank you.